Have you ever looked into an opal and seen a swirl of colors? Fiery reds, electric blues, flashes of green that shift like a kaleidoscope with every movement? That little stone may be small, but the story behind it is bigger than you might imagine. Especially when that story begins with something as simple and as rare as a drop of rain in one of the driest places on Earth. Many of the world's finest opals are born not deep inside volcanic rock or under crushing tectonic forces, but from rainwater, slowly soaking through the parched deserts of Australia. Welcome to the incredible world of opals, where geology, time, and weather come together to create one of nature's most mesmerizing treasures. Right here on History of Simple Things. Let's start at the beginning, rain. Out in the heart of Australia, in remote regions like Coober Pedy, Lightning Ridge, and Andamooka, Rainfall is scarce, but when it does rain, those droplets don't just disappear into the sand. Instead, they begin a slow journey underground, soaking through layers of sandstone and picking up silica, the same mineral found in quartz and sand, along the way. Silica is made up of tiny microscopic spheres. When rainwater dissolves this silica from rocks, it creates a solution kind of like mineral soup. And here's where the magic starts. As the water trickles deeper into the ground, it eventually reaches cracks, voids, or spaces left by ancient fossils, tree roots, or other underground formations. Over thousands, sometimes millions of years, that silica-rich water begins to settle in these cavities. The water slowly evaporates, but the silica stays behind, forming layer upon layer of microscopic spheres. Now here's the really fascinating part. If those silica spheres are all the same size and arrange themselves in a very precise grid-like pattern, light entering the stone gets bent and scattered, creating a phenomenon called diffraction. This is what gives opals their signature play of color. Reds, oranges, purples, greens, it all depends on the size of those tiny spheres and how they're layered. That dazzling rainbow display you see in an opal isn't pigment or dye. It's literally the structure of the stone splitting white light into a spectrum. It's nature's version of a high-tech hologram, except it formed underground, drop by drop, layer by layer, over millions of years. But not every opal gets to be a gemstone. In fact, most opals don't display any color at all. These are called common opals. And while they can be beautiful in their own right, they don't have that mesmerizing color play we associate with precious opals. What separates the ordinary from the extraordinary is the level of organization in those silica spheres. When the spheres vary in size or are jumbled, the result is a milky, opaque stone. Still silica, still an opal, but not one you'd find on a jeweler's shelf. Now let's talk about where all of this is happening, Australia. It's no coincidence that about 95% of the world's precious opals come from this country. The Australian outback was once part of a vast inland sea rich in silica. As that sea dried up and the land shifted, it left behind the perfect recipe. Dry climate, porous sandstone, and lots of silica. Over time, the rainwater filtering through these ancient sediments began forming opals in places no one expected, deep underground, in harsh, remote environments where few people lived. The indigenous people of Australia have known about these stones for thousands of years, often calling them fire of the desert. And they weren't far off. In the early 20th century, European settlers began mining these areas, often under harsh and dangerous conditions. One of the most famous opal fields, Cooper Petty, earned its name from an Aboriginal term meaning white man in a hole. 
And that's pretty much what mining was, digging deep holes in the scorched earth, hoping to hit a pocket of color. Miners would sometimes spend weeks or months with no sign of success. Then, in one lucky strike, they'd find a vein of precious opal, a discovery that could change their life overnight. Even today, much of Australia's opal mining is still done by small independent miners rather than large corporations. It's a gritty, labor-intensive process that often comes down to luck and patience. The most prized opals are those with vivid, bright colors across the full spectrum, especially red. Red is the rarest color to appear in opals because it requires the largest silica spheres, which are harder to form and more likely to crack. The brighter and more varied the colors, the more valuable the stone. There are also different types of opals. Black opals, found primarily in Lightning Ridge, are considered the most valuable. They have a dark background that makes the colors pop even more. White opals from Cooper Petty are more common and have a lighter, milky appearance. Boulder opals, found in Queensland, form inside ironstone boulders and often include part of the host rock in the finished gem, giving them a rugged, earthy character. When a piece of opal is found, it doesn't look like much. Covered in dust and rock, it needs to be carefully cleaned, cut, and polished. Skilled gem cutters, called lapidaries, spend hours shaping each stone to bring out its best colors and patterns. No two opals are the same. That's part of their magic. Each one is a tiny, unrepeatable masterpiece of geology and time. And all of this, every flash of color, every dazzling gem, starts with a storm. But opal formation isn't just a story about beauty. It's also a reminder of patience. The earth doesn't rush, it takes its time. Layer after layer, drop after drop, shaping beauty in silence, hidden beneath our feet. So the next time you see an opal, remember that what you're holding isn't just a piece of jewelry, it's a time capsule. A little miracle born from rainwater and sandstone, colored by light, and formed over millions of years in one of the harshest, most unlikely places on Earth. Who knew that something so extraordinary could begin with something as ordinary as rain? Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.